In studio with uh, Delegate Michael Height. Good morning, sir. Good morning, sir. And another fine Southern gentleman, Jefferson County Prosecuting Attorney Matt Harvey, who is here in a civilian role. He's not here to prosecute anybody. No, not not yet. Not today. Hey, like you're you're saying that we look like yes. Colonel Sanders, but this is not seersucker. I'm I'm yeah. kind of getting the Miami Vice vibe. You, well, only if you yeah. rolled up your sleeves. And my, Mike's got you got cufflinks. I, I do. You went all the way. How about you, Harvey? Uh, I probably do. You got yeah. cufflinks or they're, buttons? They're subtle, like me. Just a little pop of class. That's delicious. <laughs> Sticking out. Yeah. What's the deal with the cufflinks? Just kind of feeling good today? Yeah, that's just the kind of shirt I wear. Do you, uh, uh, you have a specific cufflink or is it just generic? No, it's just generic. It's just a little. Not a little American flags or anything like that? Uh, no, just Mike's little, little gold thing. That's nice. Was it feeling cute? That is Might delete later. Sweet. I'm impressed, Tight. <laughs> the Mike Kite I knew eight years ago wouldn't have shown up here in cufflinks. This is how I dress down Charleston all the time. Well, not not in this type of suit. But no, it's, it's too cold down there. I, I noticed, though, January. while you have that, you've developed a bit more southern twang when you're talking. <laughs> <laughs> he's declaring a lot. <laughs> he's, I he's do like, declare. <laughs> Give me my sweet tea. Would you please bring it now? I do declare. <laughs> <laughs> Our guest in this segment is General Chris Mookie Walker. Good morning, sir. How are you? Not too bad, gentlemen, I, I, and good morning to all the rest of the distinguished gentlemen there. And I want to let you know, I'm wearing cufflinks no. as well right now. <laughs> no way. And mine are in the shape of motorcycles because, you know, that's my gig. Very nice, General. <laughs> that is awesome. What is your favorite motorcycle? Or what do you most identify with? It is the Harley Fat Boy. As a matter of fact, I have a 2012 Fat Boy that... Uh, when I bought, I said, "Okay, I'm, I'm gonna. I like it the way it is." And all of my friends said, "You're gonna modify it." And six thousand dollars later, that that <laughs> that boy, everyone everyone around town knows that's Mookie's fat boy. You know what? Your your story reminds me of my son's wedding story. I have a son getting married in November, and uh, we were gonna we host we're hosting the rehearsal dinner, and we were gonna have it at a restaurant. So my wife was checking out prices on restaurants, and she said, "You know what?" That's just way too much money. Why don't we just have it at our house? And in my brain, I thought, sweet, I can save the five to $10,000 that a rehearsal dinner is going to cost. We'll just have it at our house. <laughs> well, as we're having it at our house, General, you know what? This rug is old. We need to get rid of this rug. We can't have a bunch of people here with this rug. And that paint, it, when was the last time you painted this house? This is, we're, we gotta get, we got to get new paint. That's not going to work. And these bathrooms, how long have these bathrooms since the builder put these bathrooms? I'd have been better off hosting four rehearsal dinners, General. <laughs> she set you up. She did set me up. She, she got you. Women are so smart. Are. She was like three chess boards ahead of me on that one. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, save money, no rehearsal dinner. Dumb, very stupid. Uh, General, let's talk about your campaign because uh, I know there were some objections to some of the things that uh, Treasurer Rowley Moore was saying on the program last week. Your folks reached out to me immediately and asked for some time this morning. So oh, I, yeah. I yield the microphone to you. What were some of your objections? All right. Well, some of my objections are, especially when he tries to claim he didn't melt down, Holy smokes, he did it in front of a wide audience, and we actually have the audio. I, I, we probably need to send it to you all so you can play it for your audience. Uh, he, he, he melted down, and my big, my big problem with it is that he's trying to say, you tell me when I said that, but it was his top campaign person, Luke Thompson, who is his campaign consultant, who is the lead of his campaign, who said it? And if 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 Riley wants to be a true leader, then he would lead his campaign and say, "Hey, that's that's not right. Take it down." And he and he would apologize for it. But instead, he's trying to throw his own people under the bus. And I go, "Ooh, that's that's not what a leader does." Now, let's if we could, a leader takes responsibility. Can we set this up so everybody knows exactly what we're talking about? You're talking about a comment that was made about you in a tweet. And also yeah. this uh, discussion that took place in Hampshire County. That's correct. So he yes, yeah, because his 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 top campaign consultant, uh, the one who leads uh, his campaign team, called me a deluded veteran for, for uh, uh, partly for daring to to challenge the dynasty. And and then as this was discussed in Hampshire County, this is what you're talking about. That when Riley objected to saying it, uh, you're classifying his behavior oh, yeah. as being a meltdown. Uh, uh, 
Well, not only was it a meltdown, and we'll send you the audio, uh, but then afterwards, I, I said, uh, first I said, okay, I thought this was a professional operation he was running here. And then when it was his turn to speak, he went up there and he said to the audience, ladies and gentlemen, I apologize for my outburst earlier. And in my mind, I said, okay, he's trying to recover. Uh, okay, okay, I can respect that. But then he couldn't help it. The, the but came. But I can't abide a lie. And so I said, oh, excuse me, we still have the evidence right here if anyone wants to see. And he, he went ballistic. And then some gentleman in the crowd, I have no idea who it was, yelled up, oh, it's only okay if you do it. And that's when Riley settled down. Okay, I think I got the entire picture now. Thank you very much. And I'm sure for our audience oh, yeah. who may be kind of like trying to piece things together, a uh, better understanding of the entire context of this. Uh, so, General, mm -hmm. why did you initially decide that you would challenge Riley Moore for this job in the U.S. Congress? Before I retired, I had a lot of veterans uh, throughout West Virginia and the West Virginia National Guard, both Air National Guard and Army National Guard, telling me, hey, we got to send you up there. And I go, what do you mean up there? And uh, they said, hey, we'll send you to Congress. I said, man, don't, don't we have that, that, uh, that, fa that, that political family running? Why would I get into that? But then when I learned that uh, you know, Riley's been hiding this from everybody, but uh, it, it's out there for anybody to look up, uh, that he uh, was a vice president for the, for the Podesta group, and he was lobbying for Somalia, Azerbaijan, Iraq, Chinese Communist Party, uh, OxyContin companies, uh, uh, big tech. I said, ooh, okay, that's not somebody I, I want representing West Virginia. And I, I was, and I said to myself, hmm, if they're, right now with the, with the thin majority right now that's in Congress, do we need someone up there who will be taking phone calls from John Podesta uh, to tell him how to vote? So I said, yep, yep, I got to get into this and beat him. Now, a credit to Riley, and I've known Riley for, I think, a dozen years since he first ran for the House of Delegates the very, very first time. Uh, in that very first interview, he was very upfront about his involvement with the Podesta Group and having worked there. So it wasn't a secret here in the Eastern Panhandle, at least not that I'm aware of, because we'd been asking him about it. Uh, for the last dozen years, why do you think yeah. that? Why would you characterize him as hiding that information? Well, uh, because uh, when I brought it up at this Hampshire County uh, candidate forum, that's when he started getting very visibly agitated because he doesn't want people to know. Second, secondly. Uh, I, I don't think the people of West Virginia realize what the Podesta group really is. And some do, but some need more education on that. And knowing that uh, John Podesta was Hillary Clinton's campaign manager and is now a special assistant to Biden, uh, and he can pick up the phone and say, Riley, take my call, and Riley will say, yeah, i got to take his call. I, I, I don't want somebody like that in, uh, representing West Virginia. Uh, he mentioned that you do not live in the district, General. It's a P.O. box, I think. He might have said off the cuff or what have you. Do you reside in this I'll district? Tell I'll tell you what. Uh, I'll invite you over to my apartment, uh, which is about a three-minute walk from the garage on King. And, and we'll, ha we'll have some beers and then go over and eat at the garage on King. And so he, he, uh, another thing, I thought his, his campaign had professionals, but they don't know what the heck they're talking about. Uh, and they keep feeding him things that will make him look stupid. I go, whew, he, he, he needs to clean out his campaign team. Did you reside in this, in this district prior to declaring for this district? Uh, I'll tell you this. District 2, right? I, I voted for Alex Mooney twice. So, so uh, again, uh, th this shouldn't even be a conversation. Delegate Michael Height. Good morning, General. Uh, I'd like to start by saying, you know, as a veteran, I was somewhat offended by the remarks that uh, the, the, the 
campaign um, person from Rawi's campaign said. Um, however, I, I got beyond that. I understood your need to respond to that, but at this point, it, it's all pettiness, and and I'm 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 over it as a as a voter. So what I really want to hear from both sides is what is it that is going to make General Mookie Walker the best candidate to represent me in the state of West Virginia? That's what I want to hear. Okay. So, uh, first I'll respond, well, I, I would be over it, too, if he had actually taken responsibility for it, like a leader should. But, okay, so let's get beyond that. Sure. Uh, right now, what we need in West Virginia is not somebody up there who is going to say, yes, uh, I will vote for the interests of West Virginia. We need somebody who is a leader who will get with all of the other veterans in Congress and find the widest swath, the, the maximum number of people in Congress who can come together so that we can actually push legislation that, that positively affects West Virginia and destroy any legislation that negatively represents West Virginia. We don't need another voter up there. We need a leader. And that is why I'm the guy. And if you, I'm telling you, you go, go, it, you all probably know plenty of people in the West Virginia Air National Guard and Army National Guard. And I'll tell your audience, if you know somebody, ask them about me as a leader. And if they tell you not to vote for me, don't vote for me. But I've, I've led both the West Virginia Air National Guard and as a Joint Task Force Commander, a lot of the West Virginia Army National Guard. And uh, if uh, again, if they don't vote for me, don't vote for me. Matt Harvey. Good morning, General Walker. Um, with your military experience, if you were in Congress, how would you have voted on the uh, foreign aid package? And and do you have any other further insights into that? I, I do. Uh, as a matter of fact, I, I keep wondering why, because I know that uh, there are uh, – a good number of congressional members who know that we have 300 billion with a b billion dollars of russian money frozen and why don't we take that money and use it for ukraine and and then use our money to build up our munitions because we if we're going to be serious about a war with china because uh, uh chairman z has already told his military be ready to take Taiwan in 2027. And we have a few, just a, only a few senior leaders in the DOD who are saying, yeah, yeah, I think we're going to fight in 2027. If we're going to be serious about this, then we need to be using our money to, first of all, uh, secure our southern border and then also build up our munitions, because right now we don't have enough munitions to fight Taiwan. If it comes to tomahawks, it comes to Mark 48 torpedoes, it comes to 155 millimeter artillery shells, it comes to JASMs, it comes to AMRAMs, we don't have enough. Sea Viper missiles uh, for, the, for the Navy uh, in their vertical launch systems, we don't have enough. We have enough for maybe two salvos. That is not enough if the balloon goes up. So we need to be using our money for us. And, and so that would have shaped my vote in that particular bill so that would have been a no for you can't ukraine no israel and was, taiwan so so i'll say this or at least for ukraine uh what i would have said hey let's let's reshape this bill we got it we we do have to supply taiwan because if we're serious about defending taiwan then a lot of it starts with them. If you all know the geography of this, uh, the, the Pacific is vast, and it will take uh, our, our warriors days to get there, if not weeks. And by then, it could be over. So the first line of defense is arming Taiwan so that they can hold off the, the Chinese Communist Party, the People's Liberation Army, from crossing the Taiwan Straits and taking them over until we get there, okay? Uh, when it comes to Israel, Israel is our only true ally in the Middle East, and we are treating them 
really badly right now. Uh, well, we, uh, this current administration, but, but there are plenty of us who uh, stand with Israel very, very strongly. And I don't like seeing that. But as for Ukraine, yes, I'd like them to win, but we can do that more smartly with other people's money, OPM, other people's money, use Russia's money to beat Russia. How, if it's frozen, how can – I don't understand the process. How do you convert that to funds uh, that is expendable? We, we, just, take, we just take it. Uh, because we control it. Now, half of it is in uh, the European Union, and that will be a little more difficult to get them to agree to. But as as the threat grows, they are growing more ready to do that as well. And so I don't see why we just didn't do that. Is that what you just call it a sanction? And... To help Ukraine, yeah, it, 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 it's crazy. I, I'm just trying to understand the process. So you just call it a sanction and convert their money? Or give it to the Ukraines? Correct. Okay. General Chris Mookie Walker, our guest here on the program, candidate for uh, Congress. Uh, give me an effective southern border strategy, general, and immigration uh, reform strategy, because I don't think you can do one without the other. Okay. So back in 2006, I was the crisis action team director for the Air National Guard, sending uh national guard troops down to the southern border and then i'd go down there uh frequently to see uh how our troops were doing down there and and what they were doing and we partnered effectively with the border patrol with systems and procedures that actually kept the border secure right now this this administration not only stopped the wall, but they also stopped the money for all of those systems as well. When I say systems, I mean uh, cameras, infrared cameras, sensors, er uh, uh, everything, okay? A a and the people to, to be able to call in, okay, we have a, a, a bunch of people coming in this particular area so we can cover it. This administration killed all of that. I don't know if you have all seen the poster that the Border Patrol used to display in their offices until they were chided by the, the Washington crowd, but it showed a nice, flat, controlled uh, border crossing. And then the day after Biden was inaugurated, it went up like a, an F-15 on an unrestricted climb. And so uh, and that was embarrassing for the administration, so they demanded they take those posters down. But again... I know what works on that, and if we do that again, that will work. Now, as as for the strategy of of getting people to, towards citizenship, look, my my father came to this country from Jamaica in 1957, uh, uh, and then my mother came to this country from Jamaica in 1960. They both did it the right way. I was on uh, an airplane flight on Monday with, uh, his name is Dr. Francis Lay. He's uh, out of Florida, uh, he, and he's a cardiothoracic surgeon. But he he came to this country well, out of Vietnam uh, on a boat, and he was picked up in the sea by uh, folks uh, associated with Taiwan. He stayed there for three months and then got the, the proper clearance to kill to the United States and became the citizen the right way. And we were talking about this and say, hey, look, for all of these people who are doing it the right way today, uh, that that's like you go into an amusement park, and you're waiting an hour to get on the roller coaster and some snot nosed kids come in and just say, I'm going before you. No, you're not. Uh, you, you throw them out of the line. So that is that is my stance on that. We have to we have to keep it proper because a lot of people are paying a lot of money for lawyers and doing it the proper way and these people just coming in thinking that they can do it uh because uh, they they claim to be on asylum that that is that is not right when i was down in yuma arizona a couple of months ago uh getting a tour with a couple of border patrol agent, agents and the mayor of yuma a couple of uh in the middle of the day, a couple of people just walked through and they just stood there. And I said, oh, 
they're just standing there. And, and the Border Patrol guy said, yeah, yeah, they, 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 they just stand there waiting for us because they have a speech memorized. I go, oh, okay, this is not the way to do that. General, did you, uh, by chance, when you were uh, working with any of the Border Patrol folks, come into contact with the chief of the Border Patrol, Michael Fisher? No, uh, back then I was a lieutenant colonel, and I didn't get to, uh, <laughs> I did not get to go up to the top and talk with them. I, I got to talk with more of the uh, GS 14s and GS 15s. Gotcha. Uh, within the border patrol. Uh, just curious on that one because I went to high school with him. He was a. Uh, oh of, my oh, goodness. Wow. Yeah, when he was right. one grade he behind me. He must be a good guy, or you'd say otherwise. No, he's a great, great guy. He, he was. Uh, okay. I Excellent. played football with him. He was. I'm proud to say my backup running back when I was a senior it was a pretty darn good one when he was Hot a senior. Uh, but then, anyway, General, uh, about two minutes left here. Uh, the microphone is yours. Tell our listeners and viewers why they should vote for you come election day, May 14. All right. So I want to reiterate to all of our listeners: we need a leader who can actually come together. I, I spent a lot of time in the Pentagon of various tours, uh, working with Army, Navy, and the Marines, and eventually Space Force. And all of them are vying for their piece of the dollar uh, that comes to the DOD. But when it comes to the mission and doing what's for the United States, we all come together. And, and I, I am that person who will do that in Congress for West Virginia. The mission is make West Virginia great again. And, uh, and and people say, when was it ever great? Well, when we had our energy industries running great, we have, we have entire counties that are devastated now because of, of, of policies from the administration. We're going to, we're going to use West Virginia energy to make West Virginia rich again so that we can increase our educational opportunities and we can bring in industry and we can bring in uh infrastructure for broadband and there are going to be a lot of people wanting to move to west virginia we'll just tell the folks from new york and california go somewhere else but visit chris walker for congress.com thank you Conway. chief master sergeant john alderton sends his best wishes to you sir Ah, oh, he is my buddy. Uh, he and his brother. Rick, yes. <laughs> oh, my goodness, yes. Yeah, oh, my goodness. Good uh, I, I send virtual hugs. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Have a great day, sir. Thank you so much for your time this morning. Thank you. Farewell.